Okay. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Rizarat from Radicat, and I'm here at Microsoft Campus at the moment with uh, Wee Hyung Tuk, uh, who is uh, uh, one of the uh, product managers in the Fabric team. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll let him to introduce himself. Sure. Hey, hi everyone, and thanks a lot to Riza for giving this opportunity to uh, talk with the community. Uh, my name is Wee Hyung, right? Uh, I lead product management for data integration at Microsoft. And so from a product portfolio perspective, right, that covers from folks, things that you're familiar with, like Azure Data Factory, Azure Synapse Analytics, and the Synapse Pipelines, right? But more recently, as of last year, right, you'll realize the tremendous or strong momentum around Microsoft Fabric. And so we brought the best of Power Query as well as Azure Data Factory together into a SaaS-led offering. And so you see that as Data Factory in Microsoft Fabric, right? And I lead product for all of that, yeah. That is cool. Um, so, so yeah, as part of this, I wanted to um, first thank you for, for the great product you are building. Uh, I see a lot of people using it. A lot of my customers are already considering using it if they are not already at the moment using it. Um, so, so in Data Factory, we of course have the Data Flow Gen 2, we have the Data Pipeline. Um, which part of that is uh, your main focus these days? Ah, it's, it's a good question. Yeah. Uh, my thing, focus is on all of them. Right. Right. Uh, and so as part of the, and as many of you are very familiar with Microsoft product teams, right, we have uh, the product management team that's responsible for the shape of the product, how we want the product to be, right, and of course working with the community and listening to all your feedback. Uh, and then we have engineering that does many of the amazing work, right, trying to bring it to uh, fruition, if you will. Uh, so I run products for all of it. And so whether it's data flows, Gen 2, uh, or whether it is the data pipeline experience uh, in Microsoft Fabric, right? My team is responsible for that. And I was, if you ask me to pick a favorite between the two, I'll say I love both of them, right? They are just amazing capabilities. Uh, and, you know, kudos to a really amazing team, right, who brought this together uh, in the span of just last year, uh, from public preview to GA and lots of more exciting things, right, that's being announced at FabricCon uh, as well. That is cool, and, and and I do remember from long time ago that you've been in um, in data integrations team like long before Fabric and even Power BI. You worked with SSIS team for a while, Azure Data Factory team. So that um, bringing that experience into Fabric, um, uh, like. Um, how does it work? Because there are things that we had in SSIS, which was done differently. Now those things are di done differently in the world of fabric. Um, like, uh, what is, um, you would say, the goal of data factory or, or data integration team in fabric? Is it going to be like the main ETL tool for Power BI and data warehousing? Or is it going to be like a single standalone type of product in the future mm -hmm. by itself? I mean, not a product, but something that you can use in other places. What, what is your kind of like vision or what do you see Microsoft vision on that? Sure, so in many of those uh, discussions, right, we talk about when we brought everyone at Microsoft doing data integration into one team, the mission of the team is really to build the world's best data integration platform for all users in every cloud. and. Our aspiration, of course, is to make sure that whether you are coming from a citizen developer background, whether you are a business analyst, and you need to just bring data or ingest data in and be able to do self-service data preparation or you just want to transform data. We want to make sure that we have the tools that meets your needs. But at the same time, you could be a data engineer that's coming from another perspective. right? You are coming from a professional data integration background, if you will. Uh, and you went with us through the evolution from SSIS to ADF, uh, and then now with Fabric. We want to make sure that you continue to have the enterprise-grade tool uh, to do your best data integration work, right? So when we brought the two teams together, it's really, one, making sure that we are able to leverage the strengths of all these uh, data integration assets that we have in the company, which you'll start seeing uh, happening a lot across data factory and Fabric. Today, for example, between Data Flows Gen 2 or Data Pipeline, they interop very nicely together. Mm -hmm. right? More exciting things to come along the way. Uh, two is one of the things that you would be very familiar if you come from a Power BI background, is this get data experience, yes. which is, well, you know, you have 
100 over data sources, some of them are your favorite data sources, you want to bring them in, whether it's to the uh, one lake that's in fabric or just any data lake that you're building. But at the same time, you want to be able to transform the data. Get data is key to all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that you see in data factory and fabric, and as we progress along this journey, and you know, thank you to everyone for you know, being with us in this journey as well, is that this data experience, or which we like to call it as the modern get data experience, uh, percolates across everything you see in data factory. So meaning whether you're starting from a pipeline, whether you're starting from a data flow gen, to, you get the same experience. Uh, but the implication of that is not just that. It means that we are able to bring in all the connectors together across data factory and uh, data flows uh, together, which means you get access to even richer set of data sources. And for many of those data sources that's in Fabric, we want to make sure that you have a first class or native experience, uh, being able to load data really quickly and so on and so forth. Right? And you start seeing some of this happening. Uh, at Fabric Conference, one of the things that we uh, announced is the ability for you to use uh, data flows gen 2 with the copy capability right and therefore in uh, data flows gen 2 you if you turn on fast copy uh, you get a day and night difference into how fast you can ingest data into the one leg uh, and you know we have been getting a lot of feedbacks on how we can continuously improve it as well but that's just one example of how we're bringing things together right, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, th thank you for mentioning that. The, uh, like, it, it's good that you mentioned the fast copy, especially. Like, um, so I, I, I see that is um, a great feature because, especially when I have a lot of data, I don't want to wait for a long time to to get it. But, but now we have fast copy in Dataflow Gen two. We have also the copy activity in mm -hmm. pipeline. Are they kind of same thing behind the scene, mm -hmm. or they are different? Is one of them going to duplicate the other one, or they both are going to stay? Mm -hmm. What is your thought on that? Yeah, so underneath the hood, they all use the copy infrastructure that we have. So uh, that's right. So yeah. that's right. Uh, and in fact, when you use Dataflows Gen 2 uh, and you turn on fast copy, what the net effect of it is that for large jobs, right, like gigabytes of data or terabytes of data or even more, the duration of Dataflow Gen 2 reduces significantly. Yes, yeah. uh, so the impact to you is actually now you spend less. Uh, CUs, if you will, Correct. in order to do that. Uh, but at the same time, you also see that we would also emit what we call the data movement CUs as well. And data movement CU is commonly associated with the copy activity. Uh, but if you sum that, net-net, the number of CUs utilized just to move huge amount of data is sig significantly much lesser. Right. Uh, and so that's one. Two, we use the same infrastructure, which means all the kinds of resiliency and reliability that we built in copy over the years, uh, you get it in data flows gen 2 as well. Now then to the other question is, would one deprecate over the other? No, uh, mainly because as we discussed, right, there is the citizen developers and the professional developers. And based on the use cases that you're trying to address, you might start off with data flows gen 2. It doesn't make sense for you to go and start a pipeline and add a copy activity. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so in the past, we've been telling people to say, well, go build a pipeline, copy the data in the lake, and then do data flows gen too. But the major feedback there is, well, there's two moving parts I have to work that, with. That is right. right. And now, you know, you could, if you're starting with data flows gen too and it meets all your needs, by the fact that you turn it on, uh, it just helps you ingest data really quickly. Right. Uh, now then the next question that a lot of people ask is, why do we have to turn it on? Shouldn't you guys figure it out? Yeah, that's right. And so right now at the preview stage, uh, we need you to turn it on so that you're aware that you're turning it on. Uh, but over time, we definitely want to work with the community uh, on learning you know, what are the patterns where we could more intelligently just figure it out and optimize it for you. Uh, we're, we're not there yet, and it's part of the journey that we're going through right now. Right. right. Okay, that, that is cool. And, and what are the new features that is exciting in the, in the data pipeline side of things? Because that is, of course, coming from the background of data factory um, and data, uh, data factory changes wasn't, let's say, as frequent as mm -hmm. the Power Query changes. It, it had a lot of mm -hmm. great things in it, but uh, what are mm, things that um, you consider as the most important features added in there? Sure. So I think a few things are definitely uh, important that we hear a lot, whether it's if, if you look at ideas or you look at some of the community feedback, working with customers and so on and so forth, is 
Um, today, many customers wanted to make sure that copy activity is able to access on-premises data yes. or data behind a VNet. Yes. And if you extend that, it's not just data behind a VNet, but it's data behind any VNet equivalent. For example, v VPCs right. uh, on Amazon and so on and so forth. Um, and so within Azure Data Factory, people will install a self-hosted integration runtime to do that. Uh, and within the Power BI world, right, everybody is familiar with the enterprise gateway. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and so when we look at this fabric and we look at data factory in fabric, we took some time to think about, well, it does not make sense for people to install two separate pieces of software. That's right. Because yeah. you have to maintain it, you have to manage it, you have to govern it, and so on and so forth. So one of the things that we did uh, in response to the feedback was, well, we really want to make sure that it's just one software that install, a software that you're familiar with, which is the enterprise gateway. Uh, or the data gateway, if you will. Yeah, and that cool. now allows you to be used with either data flows or pipelines. Uh, and you get all the things that you're used to. Yeah. But then one piece of software allows you to have access to on-premises data sources. It also allows you to have uh, access to data sources behind a VNet right. or the VNet equivalents in other clouds as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, that, that is actually a very important thing because I always get this from my customers that I don't want to install multiple gateways. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so definitely a good thing. Uh, so talking about this feature, what do you see in the roadmap coming? Those kind of things that you can, of course, talk mm -hmm. about and those kind of things that you think would be uh, kind of a game changer in the data integration part. So I think that is one. And the other thing that we now at FabricCon is uh, the general availability of VNet data gateways. Yes. Right? And uh, we get a lot of questions on what is it used for and so on and so forth. Uh, and so the VNet gateway allows you to connect to Azure sources that has a private endpoint without you to have any installation at all. Right. Uh, and definitely with on-premises or things that uh, we do not have reach to, like other clouds, you still have to install the uh, on-premises data gateway. Uh, so that's definitely one set of exciting announcement. Uh, the other set of an exciting announcement for the ADF community is for years, pipelines only supported up to 40 activities. That is right, yes. And you know, people does uh, amazing kind of innovation at space on having an execute pipeline that runs another pipeline yeah. to try to extend the limit. Uh, and so the ask on us was, well, why can't you increase the number of activities, mm -hmm. right? So at FabricCon, we announced that we 2x the number of activities supported in a pipeline. And so uh, as of now, you will be able to use 80 activities in a pipeline. Now, we understand that we should not stop there. We should keep increasing it. Uh, and given that we started on this journey, uh, we will keep pushing the limits. Uh, but right now, I think with 2x, uh, hopefully that will address the needs of customers and the community. But you know, keep giving us feedback. We want to see hey, how far we can push it. Right. That is fantastic. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, great job again you are doing. Um, you mentioned, give us feedback. What is the best way for people to reach out to you? Like, do they find you on LinkedIn, Twitter, or like, do you have a form of uh, communication for people to get back to you with the feedback, anything? Yeah, I think any channels that works, right? Uh, LinkedIn is a good medium. Uh, we do publish a lot of these um, best practices, uh, articles, uh, in, you know, like in the fabric blogs as well. Uh, and then if there's product ideas or things on product improvements, definitely ideas. Ideas is getting very, uh, there's amazing momentum there, but we treat ideas very seriously. So every week the team gets together, looking through the ideas, the top voted ideas. Right? In fact, a lot of the things that you, we talk about today came from ideas as well. That is right. uh, and at the same time, like if you're working on an implementation that leverages data factory and fabric, uh, we would love to help, right? reach out to us, uh, we have a good um, and amazing Fabric Cat team. Uh, my team is directly engaged with many of these customers as well, right? And so reach out to us. We'll figure out where to get you the best help, right? But more importantly, to help you, you know, get up to speed with Fabric, but more importantly, uh, to be able to do amazing things with Fabric or up, not just Data Factory. Um, and we also have a learning hub as well, right? So if you go to the Fabric site, uh, there's amazing resources shared by the MVPs who share their own personal stories, but it also leads to the certification as well. And I know like many of you are you know, sharing experiences on what other things to learn about the certification, how should you go about passing the exams and so on and so forth. So thanks a lot to the community right, for sharing that. Yeah. 
Awesome. Thank you, Vihyung, uh, for your time, uh, for all the work you and the team is doing. It's fantastic. So everyone watching this, um, use those communication channels, get in touch with Vihyung and the team. Even if you put your um, questions in the, like, under the description of this video in YouTube, I'll make sure that I'll pass it to, to the team somehow. Uh, if you put it in the ideas, make sure that you start evangelizing it. Just putting the idea there is not going to do anything. You need to get some votes, of course, because like the most important ideas are what the team is working on. So, so try to um, let the people know that you have this idea and they might help you to uh, increase the vote for it. Uh, thank you again for watching us. Thanks, Vihyung, and until the next video, see you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Bye.